Here to comment further is Update Health Correspondent Roseanne, Roseanne Adana. Gilda Radner was a comedic genius and trailblazer in the entertainment industry. Her infectious energy, unique characters, and witty humor made her a beloved figure in the world of comedy. From her early days on Saturday Night Live to her successful film career, Radner left an indelible mark on popular culture. Today, I would like to honor Gilda Radner and tell you the untold story of her life, from her struggles with health issues to her incredible contributions to raising awareness about ovarian cancer. Before I continue, I want to ask you to support my channel by just clicking the subscribe button. Gilda Radner was born June 28, 1946, into the prosperous Detroit Jewish family of Herman and Henrietta Radner and older brother Michael. Herman's father, George Rakowski, had emigrated from Lithuania to New York City and later to Detroit, where he established a successful kosher meat business. Herman, despite only a fifth grade education, made the family fortune from an Ontario brewery he purchased in the 1920s. Radner's mother, Henrietta, was an aspiring ballet dancer who worked as a legal secretary until she married Herman in October 1937. Radner remembers her childhood as one of the most difficult periods of her life. Because her mother could not tolerate the Detroit winters, the family spent four months each year in Florida, disrupting the school year and preventing Radner from making close friends. Radner became attached instead to her governess, Dibby, whose real name was Elizabeth Clementine Gillies, the model for her SNL character, Emily Lidella. When school children teased Radner for being overweight, Dibby provided Radner with her first lesson in comedy, telling her to say you're fat before they can. Just make a joke about it and laugh. Her relationship with her mother was distant and somewhat competitive, but Radner felt very close to her father, who died of brain cancer when she was 14 years old. Indulging his own show business fantasies, Herman encouraged her to perform, gave her dancing lessons, and often took her to Broadway road shows in downtown Detroit. While not religiously observant in her adult life, Radner had a clearly Jewish upbringing. Her brother had a bar mitzvah, she attended Sunday and Hebrew school, and sat shiva for her father when he died. For comic material, she often drew on the Jewish community in which she grew up, in skits about the gum-cracking Jewish co-ed Rhonda Weiss or in her famous fake commercial for skin-tight Jewish jeans. Radner attended the University of Michigan, majoring in drama, but never graduated. She moved with a boyfriend to Toronto and landed a part in the musical Godspell. She later joined the Toronto company of Second City Comedy, an improvisational comedy troupe where she worked with Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi, and Bill Murray. Radner moved to New York in 1973, joining many of her Second City friends in the National Lampoon Show, an off-Broadway cabaret. In 1975, producer Lorne Michaels chose Radner, whom he had seen perform in Toronto and other members of the Second City Company for his new late-night comedy show. Gilda Radner premiered with the Not Ready for Primetime Players on Saturday Night Live in October 1975 and continued to perform with the troupe until 1980, garnering a 1978 Emmy Award for her work on the show. While life as a television star was glamorous and fulfilling, Radner suffered from the pitfalls that can accompany fame. Under constant public scrutiny, her lifelong insecurity about her appearance resurfaced, manifesting itself in bouts of bulimia. And although Radner clung to the SNL crowd as a surrogate family, she often voiced her desire for marriage and a family of her own. Radner took her SNL act to Broadway in 1979, where she received mixed reviews from critics, but met her first husband, George Edward Smith, the band leader for the show, whom she married in a civil ceremony in 1980. Radner appeared in Buck Henry's film First Family, and then in Hanky Panky, during which she met Gene Wilder. She described the meeting as love at first sight. She soon divorced Smith and made a second movie with Wilder, The Woman in Red. Wilder and Radner were married in the south of France in September 1984. They made one more movie together, Haunted Honeymoon, before Radner was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Between chemotherapy treatments, Radner wrote her autobiography, It's Always Something, in which she detailed her struggle with cancer and the aid she received from the wellness community. Gilda Radner died in Los Angeles on May 20th, 1989. In 2008, Gilda Radner was posthumously honored for her contributions to the television industry with an induction into the Television Academy Hall of Fame. 
This recognition solidified her status as a trailblazer in comedy and a beloved figure in the entertainment world. Gilda Radner was an incredible talent who left a lasting impact on the world of comedy and entertainment. Through her groundbreaking work on Saturday Night Live and her unforgettable characters, she became a beloved household name. Despite facing personal challenges and health issues, Radner never lost her humor or her ability to make people laugh. Her legacy lives on through her iconic performances and the Gilda's Club organization, which helps support individuals and families affected by cancer. Gilda Radner will always be remembered as a trailblazer, a comedic genius, and an inspiration to generations of performers.